until we got to Daytona, we really didn't know what it sounded like. Folks, to listen to this four car, this, there you, you hear him as he goes by? Yeah. That's a different sound. There. Is that ball valve still in here? You could hide a lot, a lot more things in black if you get them white. We're going under. I wanted to see you underneath this car for a very long time. We're here near Bristol, Virginia in the McClure Brothers shop. That is Sterling Marlin's 1995 winning Daytona 500 car. You know, the one that had the crazy sound. This is just his first lap. The, I guess the big thing about this car was the difference in the sound. And I wish we could get a microphone down for you folks to listen to this four car. This, there you when we unloaded in Daytona. That car sounds a little bit on you, sounds like an Indy car almost. What? Our first lap, practice lap on the racetrack. We were told that everybody in the Bush series who were going through inspection on the backstretch at Daytona ran to the fence to see what kind of car that was. <laughs> and it sounded like an Indy car. It's a different sound than you're used to hearing. It sounds a little like an Indy car. Here's a quick back-to-back -back sound comparison to show you guys what everybody was used to hearing or expecting to hear whenever this Sterling Marlin Kodak car went out on the track. ...on uh, the first lap, a couple of miles an hour. A couple of miles an hour. I was standing around there at the NASCAR trailer with Bill Franson, and it went by, and it went by, and he said, what in the hell have you done now? Prior to the 95 season, uh, in December, a gentleman from Salt Lake City, his name was uh, Dr. Gass. That was his stage name or his name that he marketed his product with. Called and said, I think I can help you with four or five horsepower. Are you interested? And I said, we worked a deal out, and I said, yeah, send it. So we, he sent it, and we dynoed it. And then after we dynoed it, we had to, of course, fit it to the car. Until we got to Daytona, we really didn't know what it sounded like. Really? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it looked different, but we didn't know what it sounded like. You couldn't tell with the dyno room. And, uh, and we really didn't have a, 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 we just ran the X-pipe. We didn't know what it sounded like with the tailpipes and everything. So our first, when it went on the racetrack the first time, is the first time we had heard it. So you were just as shocked as everybody else was? Well, I was real pleased. <laughs> I know that. But all week long, people would photograph this car and try to catch us with their pants down to, to see if they could determine why this car sounded so different. They didn't know if the engine, they didn't know if it was the exhaust, they didn't know if it was the intake, they didn't know what it was. And we wanted to keep them in suspense. So uh, we took the qualifying motor out and changed motors, I think, once. They never did see what it was. We had blankets on the car. And we had it covered up pretty good. <laughs> and NASCAR would let us put it in the trailer at that time. Anybody could put their car back in the trailer at, at night. So this car did not have 180 degree headers? No 180 degree headers. They're just regular headers? Just regular headers. Okay, well then everybody... Regular collectors, just uh, a different X-pipe and tailpipes. Were they uh, tri-wide collectors or four to one? They were uh, tri-wise. Okay. I think. We'd have to look and see, but I think they were, we ran both of them with the same exhaust. Huh. Did that change the sound much? Not, not a lot. Okay. Not a lot. What does the engine look like in this thing? So this, this is not in its as raced form. What what happened to this car between Daytona and well, this car today? Was wrecked and rebuilt. Up here in the shop, uh, it was involved in an accident at Talladega with Dale Earnhardt and uh, Ernie Irvin. So we rebuilt it. It's, and put it back as close as we we could to the, the way it was when it was raced when it was last raced so the interior of the car is the, exactly how it was yes. when it was wrecked oh yes it wasn't changed nope same seat man that window was tiny he was tiny sterling was tiny Splendor. so this is all how it was 
Well, I guess how it was at Talladega. How much of this did you change from Talladega 96 to, or what was that? Yeah, Daytona 95 to Talladega 96. Did, did the inside of the car change at all? Like the same stickers no. and everything? No, that's pretty much the same. And how did his uh, daughter's hair bow end up tied to the roll bar? Well, that's, Sterling did that prior to the race. Oh, he did? Yeah, yeah. So we left it there. So in that picture, he did he take it out of the car and give it back to her because she was wearing it in victory lane wasn't she or was that a different that was a different that was a different picture i think i think that may have been prior to it it could have been yeah yeah huh yeah and then the two lucky pennies on the dash that he had for some reason he had to ask him. so he had dash pennies before dale earnhardt did yeah i guess because he won 98 with the penny on the dash right. and this was two years yeah yeah so that's a fun fact it, yeah. Didn't know. This is neat. I like noticing all the little like quirks of the super speedway well, bodies. You try to hide this and hoping the air will come out here. Your template had to go like this. Huh. So did you pull this out? We pulled that out. Okay. Other side. You see the same thing. What are the other uh like little things like that that you did? Well just finishing the corners just positioning things i mean this car went the wind tunnel several times and just a position of most things and then you try to get this you know have the right shots on the car and i think i can't remember at this time if they were dictating uh i think they were di di dictating the springs that you had to have in the car so uh you had to uh Try to get the back of the car down. And this is it. Wasn't this in a museum for a long time? It's been down in a museum in Greenville for 10, 15 years. 10 years. 10 to, 10 to 12 years. Yeah, let's look at these these headers in here. You can see them a little bit. They definitely got some some length to them. It looks like the... Yeah, let's, yeah let's, let's jack it up and look under it. I want to see what this <laughs> what these pipes look like for the real deal firsthand it looks like these boom tubes were handmade like they this is so this was before they were being mass produced <laughs> you got one of those one of those slow jacks <laughs> yeah that jack is a whack you're getting like a, a quarter pump out of that <laughs> to see the underside of the real car. This is intense. You gonna lay down or you want to? Yeah. We do the other side too? No, I can okay. see just fine like this. this is, okay. We're going under. I wanted to see underneath this car for a very long time. Well, he was asking me what one I said, I can't remember. Oh, that's interesting. That is cool. Yeah, those are pretty big, long primaries with a four to one collector. So the, the X pipe says 2003 80 car not tested 2004. So this isn't like the original pipes, but this is what it would have looked like back then. Yeah. Okay. Hey, it looks like they were run on something. It's got scrapes on the bottom. Wow, that's cool. I that yeah, there's some, some some spiders. We'll deal with it for the for the glory here. Spider with. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. We can handle it though. Not every day you get to crawl underneath a Daytona 500 winning car and look at it. There's not too many of these just floating around. You notice how much better that paint is? Yeah, that's really cool looking. It's smooth. Have you noticed the, the difference in this car? The, this car is black inside. Yeah. Instead of white. 
Yeah. Yeah, what's the story behind that? You can hide a lot, a lot more things in black than you can in white. <laughs> <laughs> Happens every day. The underneath the car was Imran. If you notice, it's not flat, it's shiny. Yeah. Why is that? It's slick, because the air moves faster across it. Was that actually a noticeable difference in the wind tunnel? Well, Larry would probably know. Remember they're painted Imran underneath? Yep. Black Imran? Yeah. Yeah, what kind of paint is this? I like this. It's Imron, kind of huh. Imron, black. Interesting. And then the inside is uh, flat black. Car bar. Yeah, huh. spray can. This car, they tore us down in Daytona. It's a firecracker race. We had lines that run through the door. Old line. Old lines, so we could shut, turn it on and pan it off. Yeah, had a. Yeah, so uh, we could pull back and. Or let it, or not pull back. Yeah, had an open and close lever yeah. in, the, in the floor yeah. down there. What was that for? Or why would you want that? Build it more vacuum. Huh. Suck more oil. Keep oil sucked out of the engine. Was, was Make that, more power. Was that something for qualifying or during the race? We did both. So how did how did that work? Like situationally, what was that? We ran in the race. We we had not on this car. But prior to this, they outlawed it on this car. We had an oil pump that ran off the rear end. Hmm. Instead of being a single stage oil pump, you know, that would circulate the oil, run through the cooler, we had like a five stage, wasn't it? Five stage oil pump. And we sucked the oil out of the oil pan, the engine. And we got away with it uh, for a couple of years and uh, they caught us. Well, we cut a, cut one of the oil lines and we started leaking oil. Hmm. So they outlawed it after that. So you were, the engine's oil pump was driven off the rear end, not the engine? Both. Both. So when you were at speed, you would you had another one that would pull more vacuum on the engine. Right. Interesting. Yep. And there was a ball valve that the driver could reach. Right, reach in there and turn it on top. Huh. They found that and they said, oh, we've caught what they've been doing. Gary Nelson got in there with his tie and his suit. <laughs> then they determined, well, it's nothing. <laughs> anyway. So they thought that's what you were doing, but it, yeah. was it just one they of the things? They thought that was a big deal. It helped us a little bit, but it wasn't a big deal. He didn't know how much it helped. So there was no, it wasn't like a big deal, there's a bunch of little things. Bunch of little things. You had to pay attention to detail. We worked on these cars 12 months out of the year. We worked after the last race from daylight to dark on restricted plate motors. We had one NASA engineer, ex NASA engineer, uh, from up here in Whitfield that helped us on our intake manifold. Did you ever run these heads again after Daytona? Like did it? Did, did this? Did this in here hurt power if it didn't have a plate? What was, what was going on with the intake manifold? Well, we just set some design changes inside uh, that helped it change the signal to the carburetor. You had to have the right oil pan. You had to have the right scraper in the engine. You know, you bolted on before the oil pan to keep the oil from. You wanted to rob that engine of all the oil that was splashing around. You didn't need that. All you needed was oil going to bearings and rings and suck out the rest of it. Oh, Runt was pretty smart. You've heard of him, haven't you? Yeah. Runt Pittman. Yeah. Everybody brings him up when they, when the sound of this thing comes up. Yeah. Because people still don't know. There's people who know, and then there's people who think that it was 180 degree headers or they think Runt had something going on with the engine where they're like, oh, it sounded like that because it was actually a V6 because they had two cylinders sucking air and supercharging the other ones. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no. We didn't even have a... We, our engine was, wasn't a lightweight engine. It was a pretty heavy engine uh, during this time. Did this car have like two floor pans in it to no. have better under air roll or anything like that? No. It had a good balance. 
you could run it wide open. And uh, even with the, when the tires got warm, you could, he could run it wide open. Hmm. People were lifting, he was going on. Was the there was the axle offset in the rear end to get more spring compression? Uh, somewhat. I heard of people yeah. doing that. Because yeah. if they had the mandated spring rate, you move the axle back and then it, it gets a little bit more leverage on there. Is that ball valve still in here? I look for it. It's not. It's not? Uh-uh. But I, you, you, now that you mentioned the window, look at the window on this one and that one there. This car and that car. Versus the, the, the downforce car? Yeah. Yeah, the window is like... I don't know if I can even fit through that window. I can fit through that window. She can fit through this window. I don't know, like, I don't know how your helmet would fit through this window. Getting like, if you had to get out of the car quickly, you'd have not a whole lot of room for error. Device then either, so they didn't have to worry about that. Yeah, that's true. So it's like less... But all this, this is just like how that kind of fans in and be flat. That's just really neat. Yeah, all aerodynamic tricks up right here. See all that right there rolls and. This is where the window net would have uh -huh. clamped in, right? Yeah. All right, go ahead. You know how to do it? One oh. foot, second foot, slide in. Right foot. Okay. Next one. And slide right in. Look at that. She's done it before. She's about his side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no way I could fit in there. I get stuck halfway in the car because my body would not fit in that seat. Then Bobby Hamilton came was bitching because they were black and hot. The paint is white. The paint is, yeah. yeah. So what did Bobby Hamilton say that caused you to paint them gray inside? Well, he said they were so hot. They were hotter inside. He didn't like it. So then he didn't started. like it. Huh? Did you tell him that you can't hide things in gray paint as easily? Yeah. He didn't care? He didn't care. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he told Rob. Rob said, "Come in there one day. We were we were Daytona, Calvary, and place." He said, "That's not." He said he was complaining. He said it's not accelerating. Uh, when you have to let off, of Rob said, "What do you mean, let off? You're not supposed to let off in that car. Keep it wide open." <laughs> That's what we told all of our drivers. Run it wide open. Drive where they're not. So Bobby didn't complain about that anymore. <laughs> I asked him if the car ran, and he said it would, but they've never started it since they restored it 15 years ago, so it has no oil in it. It probably need to be, you know, carburetor might need to be cleaned out or primed or something. It basically, it was not ready to start on the spot. But if we could get Sterling to go there, we could get it ready to start and have him start it. If that's something you'd like to see, leave a comment. Maybe go comment on Sterling's Facebook pages. If he's still out there racing. You know, like, let's make this happen. I think it'd be awesome to hear that car and to have it fire up for the first time since Talladega 1996 and have him be the one sitting in there poking the button would be pretty special. We also went to Larry's house where he pulled out the cylinder heads and intake manifold from Ernie Irvin's 1991 Daytona 500 winning car and like they just cleaned it off They're, it's all exactly how it was we get to look at it uh, it explains everything the little tips tricks all the weird things they put inside there for the restrictor plate intake you know to make more power he explains how people cheated all that kind of stuff you're going to want to watch that video so if you're checked now and see if you're subscribed if you're not make sure you are and click the little bell so you get notifications too On top of that we rode around with larry and he showed us every single building that Morgan McClure Motorsports ever raced out of, except the very first one when they bought the stuff from GC Spencer and used his garage for a few races. They had three different shops. They were all still in Abingdon. They're all still there. We went to all of them and he explained all of that. So that's gonna be a separate video too. You can find all that stuff on the Racing History Nerd Zone playlist, among all the other classic NASCAR related things we've done. And this thing right here is a little bit of an experiment related to this particular X-pipe car. Um, we're building equal length primary headers for it. 
and using uh, an X pipe system that actually came off of one of Morgan McClure's cars. That's a real one. It's just like the one on the 95 car. We're building these headers to fit so we can do a sound test, see if we can make this, uh, this car sound kind of like that, you know. It's not gonna sound just like it, but we can just do that X pipe howl sound. That's what we want. Oh, and this is part of it too here. That's the real deal stuff. In addition to that, uh, there's a video that explains more technical stuff about why the X pipe sounds the way it does in that whole era of super speedway plate racing that the cars sounded like that and why they stopped sounding like that. You know, boom tubes, everything. If you like that stuff, you're in the right place. There should be all kinds of different things to feed your thirst for this kind of knowledge. So we will see you over there. So what are these, what is this right here? This is the winning uh, intake and set of heads off the 91 Daytona 500 car that Ernie Irvin ran. Won our first Daytona 500 in 1991. The heads and the matching intake.